Okay, we'll start. So, if anybody is there, I'd like you to uh, raise your hands so that we can start some interaction. I'm going to uh, Symbiosis Institute. Yeah, the first line: rechargeable solid-state batteries to uh, the portable electronics. This statement is uh, the initiative level. Uh, this is for in this introduction, and it is for the initiative level audience. Okay, very good. And then after that, the next sentence. Of the main challenges. Uh, to the discharge uh, recharge cycles this is part b this is background and this uh, implied for the department level audience okay thank you very much that's the correct answer i will go to the next institute kle institute of technology i have a question so how many uh, minimal words should be in a uh, sentence when to break it as two sentence and how how many what is the minimal number of words to be in a sentence no, I don't think there is any uh, such uh, recommendation. Uh, it's just a style of writing. So even if you have a long sentence, if you uh, break it appropriately using clauses, I don't think uh, it will be unreadable. Uh, similarly, if you write a short sentence and write it badly, that is also unreadable. So it is just the. Uh, I don't think there is any recommended thing. But usually, in technical literature, the sentences are little longer but increasingly people are uh, asking to write shorter sentences especially in abstract and not long sentences there's no uh, norm for number of words that way regional center of anna university the abstract what you have given the answer for that what we are discussing is the first sentence gives the introduction. Yeah, we have already discussed the first sentence and the second sentence also. Now, what is the third sentence beginning with although promising electrode systems? That will be the problem describing already we are having the promising electrode system. So, uh, to others in the room and in other colleges, my question this is. Uh, Regional Center of Anna University, what they claim is that the sentence beginning with although promising electrode systems have been recently proposed. They claim that this sentence is the problem statement. So, I am asking them why do they think so? Yes, Anna University, please tell us. Sir, they are telling about the problem what we are having in the uh, recent condition. Right. So, what is the research question that is being addressed? If I ask you, what is the research question that is being addressed? If this is the problem statement, you should be able to find out what the research question is. So, what is the research question? A research question should be an interrogative statement. What is it? Why is it? Or something like that. Like I showed an example, in the last abstract. So, what is the research question that is being addressed here? You are correct that this is the problem statement how the lifespan is can be increased exactly very good thank you very much so the problem is it's like a summary of the literature what is the summary of the literature although promising electrode systems have been recently developed okay so this is a summary of uh, literature it says that although these things have been developed but something else is missing what is missing that the longevity or something right their lifespans are limited so what is the thing that is lacking the lifespan is lacking so how to improve the lifespan that is the question maybe that is the question but we will know if that is the question if we read the following sentence so i will go on to the next college this is sushila devi bansal college the question could be how to improve the lifespan now, if that is the question, then the following statement must be the result. Is the result actually answering the question? Can you? Yes, the result is here. Here we report that electrodes made of from here up till recharging rates. Here yes. we report that electrodes made of nanoparticles of transition metal oxides yes. uh, demonstrate electrochemical capacities of so and so with 100% ca uh, percent ca capacity retention for up to 100 cycles and high recharging rate yes so essentially what they are saying is how do we improve the lifetime 
okay or how can it be improved they say that by doing this methodology blah 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 whatever it is we find that it is life cycle is improved okay uh, so what was suggested as the question is correct and what you are saying the answer is also exactly answers the question so now you see the structure how beautifully it is constructed the whole essence of the work is in this two sentences one the question how to improve life uh, cycle of this uh, lithium ion battery the answer is they, the life cycle of lithium ion battery can be improved by doing that whatever is written there very precisely the question and answer the research statement and the answer is stated in these two lines okay all that was said before was introduction and all that is going to come below is implication okay so now i am going to ask the next college islamic university kashmir okay we have come up to this here we report we have finished that sentence the sentence ending in uh, recharging rates okay now the question is the mechanism of li reactivity what does that sentence imply these are the findings the how actually we have done this the uh, solution part is here we report that electrodes made of nanoparticles and till the end but the mechanism in light reactivity differs from the classical says that how actually we have done this research the methodology which has been used they are saying that how it happens ok it is only of mechanism ok then what is the line that is following we expect that the use of transition metal what is that line so this is actually I think that this is the, to enhance the uh, scope of the research that how actually where we can further uh, uh, research for this uh, topic the scope of the topic. So uh, can we say it is an implication of the result exactly suppose I were to ask a question as soon as they stated the result here we show that we have improved the life cycle of the battery of lithium ion battery and if I ask a question so what ok the answer to that question would be what is the importance of that. So the importance is that it will lead to further improvement in the performance of lithium ion batteries. Now we can still go and ask so what, so what would you say suppose I ask one more question after they sent say the last sentence I ask you one more question so what, what will you say. The further improvement in the uh, performance of the lithium ion batteries. You are giving me uh, very technical uh, implications. Okay, I am I am a layman. I am come. I have come from arts background. So what? So what that when actually we are going to use the lithium ion batteries, how your performance is going to increase if you are going to use these lithium ion batteries in comparison to what you are actually using right now? So what? What does it mean to me? That means that your efficiency will increase in comparison to what type of batteries you are currently using. I do not understand efficiency. How you how your results are going to be improved, how you can how you can say if you are using if you are a consumer you are buying batteries, how money will be saved using this type of batteries as compared to the old batteries you are using. Okay, very good. So that is one way of saying that you will save money, but more importantly you can say something like that you do not have to buy batteries often, you do not have to charge often. Today you are charging your mobile phone every day, maybe tomorrow you will charge it once in two days. Okay? These are some things that even a layman who is uh, do not even know, uh, he is not even literate but he knows to use a, a mobile phone will try, will be able to understand. Okay? So th that is what is expected uh, when you get try to find an answer to this so what questions. Okay? Thank you very much. Now we will do a uh, next exercise, now this is on the same topic that we discussed yesterday alright. So yesterday we discussed this topic on monkeys ok, monkeys behavior and so on. So what I am going to do is this is picked up from the abstracts that you had done as an assignment in Moodle. So we have just randomly picked up two assignments and then uh, what I want to do and you to do is to read these pages, two pages I am going to show one by one and again identify because the assignment was you are supposed to let me just recall the assignment statement, you are supposed to read this uh, paper or abstract 
and then rewrite the abstract ok, rewrite in your own words and by rewriting you had to have again the same structure, broad introduction, sp department specific background, problem, results, implication to the department and implication to the university level. So, this is what was the problem statement, I am going to show you two abstracts, the first one again I want you to read this carefully and provide your criticism. First of all, assume that this has come from your student, you have given this assignment to your student and they have submitted this and you want to uh, improve their abstract, find their mistakes and write better ok. So, please go through this and uh, we will give you op opportunity one by one. Uh, we will go to Periyar Maniamai. Uh, the given uh, paragraph deals about the, I am speaking about the introduction, the paragraph deals about the biological sciences printed on monkeys for classifying the visual arrays. Right. That is the introduction. I want you to criticize, assume that this is an assignment submitted by your uh, student and I want you to help them improve the submission. Have they followed the structure? And if they have followed the structure, is there any areas that they can improve? So, in this case, the students can have some more background knowledge by learning the paragraph, by learning the given uh, lesson and they also can have uh, analysis, problem stating and they can give the results. Now, can we just take sentence by sentence and can you just give your comments? So, so let us say you are correcting this assignment and you want to give comments ok, this sentence has to be written better, this is not appropriate, this is written nicely and so on. So, let us take first two or three sentences and then we will move on to the next college. So, the introduction given by the students is uh, seem to be ok, but the detail of the background is not that to the mark and they have not given the general problems to, we can make them to have some general problems stating properly and one main point and uh, two more comparative statements according to the biological sciences and also to make them to have a general awareness about the contents and make them to get a broader aspects. Okay. This is how we can make a modification, that, uh, modification sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me go on to Shastra University, Tanjabur. Uh, we find it they all our friends are from English and uh, computer science backgrounds sir, we find it difficult to uh, criticize this. No, it is ok. No, in fact, it is very important that people from English background criticize this because people from other engineering backgrounds do not have, are not able to analyze a sentence for what a sentence is. Because at least I think people from English background can at least understand what a sentence is about. You do not need to understand the full meaning. But uh, you are more better trained to tell what the sentence is talking broadly about, is it introduction, is a problem and so on. Let us take the first sentence, training was provided to monkeys to classify visual arrays. Uh, first two sentences are uh, background. Ok, let us just stop there and then uh, just take the first sentence only. Training was provided to monkeys, this is very general ok, there is nothing technical about it, forget about vi classify visual arrays, that is technical, let us forget about that. Training was provided to monkeys, ok. Here without providing any introduction or background, they are uh, coming to the topic I, th I think sir. Exactly, this is something that they did as part of their work. The first sentence itself is describing something that they have done. Okay, it is not about what is introduction, what others have done. The first two sentences, the first few sentences is supposed to be a broad introduction to the area and what others have done. It is like a literature review and so on. So, the first sentence is certainly not a literature, it is something that they have done as part of the work. Okay, so, first of all it is incorrectly placed, it is not an introductory statement and as you rightly pointed out there are may be some grammatical mistakes ok. Monkeys shows which is wrong, monkeys show a reaction signature of adult human comparison judgment. I think that sentence is not fully constructed, but let us not worry about that. Again monkeys show a reaction signature, 
means what? It is some outcome of what they have done. The first sentence is monkeys, monkeys were done this, monkeys did, uh, were provided some training and the second sentence is an outcome of that. Now, outcome is essentially a result or something like that and that is not the starting point of what we had asked. Of course, there might be some journals where you can write that. I am not saying this abstract is wrong in that sense. Abstract is not to the structure that was requested. Okay. All right, we will go on to the next sentence. We will go to another college, Medak Indur Institute of Technology. In the particular paper, the first two lines says that basically the methodology that they have said in the paper rather than the introduction part, uh, in a general structure, initially the uh, introduction should become, it should be like something uh, visual the systems are those which is used to classify the uh, mental techniques between human and animals, it should be like that. And the, in next particular two lines, they have given the result parameters and the outcomes rather than the process. Okay. Let us go to another example. Okay, so, the same uh, topic of monkeys uh, cognition is another abstract picked up from the Moodle submission. Uh, please go through this and I will ask uh, you all to comment. The problem is assume that this assignment has been submitted to you by your student in your class and you want to help them identify the mistakes and help them improve the sentences, structure it properly and improve the sentences. Uh, Let us go to Sarvajanic College. Humans and monkeys are believed to represent numerical values in similar value, but the specific, this is general background sir, we were, this is the introduction, actually it is a problem statement because they say that the process has not been made clear yet. Okay, very good, right. So, part of the first sentence. First sentence is the problem statement, second statement sentence is the result. Okay, so uh, that, th thank you very much. I will move on to the next college, CU Shah College of Engineering. Yes, yes sir, sir, the, the first, first sentence, sentence as uh, previous uh, madam said that it is uh, really introduction of the paper, the abstract, sorry. But the second sentence, the research explores whether monkeys show any responses, that could be one of the findings that they have done. The research explores, this is a finding, but sir, this is probably uh, explores whether monkey shows, that could be a prediction also. Why is it a prediction? Sir, the research explores, meaning that by whatever the abstract I am writing, that probably are talking about the testing, that whether the monkey show any responses as observed in human or not. So, probably it may be the comparison uh, of the testing, what they, whatever they are doing. And it has been compared with some of the speed of making decisions too. So, this is a comparison between the the monkeys and the human and then the findings have been given in the last statement, the findings imply that monkeys showed a semantic quality by comparing. No, no, hold on. The research explores whether monkeys show any responses, blah, blah, blah. So, it is a part of the question. So, the previous line is kind of a part of problem statement. The next line is expansion of the problem statement, it is not essentially a result. Okay. Uh -huh. Because it is connected to weather, that is why I am saying that it is probably predic prediction. It is not prediction, a prediction is not, it is a, when you say the research explores, it means it is what they are doing, is they answering that question whether monkey show any responses. So, that is not a prediction, it is incorrect to say it as a prediction. Okay. So, which sentence then is the result sentence in this whole paragraph, which is the sentence which shows the result? Ah, sir, that is the finding, well, the, the findings imply that monkeys showed a cementing cognitive, cognitive effect comparable to what is observed in humans and that proves 
that is the final uh, finding that evolutionary primitive magnitude comparison is common to both. So, there is a small problem with the sentence. The sentence begins by saying the findings imply, but the findings itself have not been told before. When you say the findings imply, that means the findings has to be written before. However, it says that monkey showed a semantic congruity effect. Actually, that is the result. So, the sentence is not corrected, constructed properly. The monkey showed a semantic congruity effect is a result and that is the finding and that has an implication. So, this sentence is not constructed correct. Okay. So, the findings imply should come after you are saying that we found that the monkeys show a semantic congruity effect and the findings imply something something else or the findings proves a evolutionary primitive thing. So, that becomes an implication. Okay. So, this is how I want you to uh, deconstruct a sentence and give feedback to your students. So, once you are ask your students to peer review their own uh, friends or colleagues uh, answer, ask them to do, do that first and then take a few examples and show uh, things like this. Okay. So, the next assignment now for all of you is to actually write an abstract. We are going to write an abstract based on the same topic, this monkey's topic. Okay. Now that I have told you how to construct and how to deconstruct, I am going to show you this article which we, which you have all downloaded it yesterday. And I want you to rewrite the abstract, at least the first the few lines. What you need to do now is to read this, just read only the abstract and introduction okay, and rewrite it in the structure that we have asked. Okay. Then I am going to go through one by one college and ask you to one college to tell an introduction, another college to tell a background and another college to write a problem statement. So, this way we are going to make an abstract collaboratively. Okay. So, please uh, work for next 5 minutes, come up with an abstract. Now, the same, please go through this uh, abstract carefully because the same material we will be using for elevator pitch as well as for summary writing. So, you have to just go through this once, understand only the uh, introduction and what is written in the abstract. Okay, so, we will give you about 5 minutes time and come back. Uh, welcome back. Sharad Institute Kolhapur had some question in the morning regarding abstract. So, if you want we can take it up now. Rafi. I had a question that uh, regarding abstract, uh, in abstract is nothing but the narrow down part of the introduction and actually it is just of the whole article we used to write. In uh, scientific article can't we write verbatism like some technical words we used to write in the abstract. Okay, So, will it be okay plagiarism in the scientific articles or no? See technical word that is not called plagiarism. We, if you write it one place and rewrite the same phrase in another place in the paper, that is not called plagiarism. Plagiarism is between two different sources. In this case, it is just if you write one sentence in abstract and put the same sentence in your uh, uh, introduction, then it it's little looks bad that is all. It is not plagiarism. You can always rewrite because when you write in the uh, introduction, it will be a little more flexible and very uh, loosely stated and little uh, many more sentences to describe a single concept. Whereas, in abstract you are going to condense it into just one sentence. So, usually it will not be the same. So, there is no concern of plagiarism, but certainly you can, you should repeat keywords. As I said a little while ago that uh, keywords has to be same in the abstract, introduction, uh, anywhere in the body, in the conclusion, because keywords unite the paper having the same keyword helps the reader understand that it is the same concept that is being discussed. Now, if you start using synonyms of technical keywords, then 
many technical keywords may have slight variations in their meaning if you use a different word. So, it is better not to use synonyms for technical words, please use the same word in the abstract, introduction, conclusion, other parts of the paper. Okay, does it answer your question? On behalf of my all colleagues and thank you for this interesting session. Thank you. Okay, so I am going to reset the hand raises now and uh, anybody who is ready with an introductory statement to this uh, paper can raise your hands. Kaley Institute of Technology. Yeah, the introductory statement that I have written is, uh, it is generally known that the brain of the monkeys can be trained to mimic the human brain. Okay. So, this so, uh, I thought was providing an adequate amount of introduction so that uh, a layman can understand uh, what we are going to work on. So, it is generally known that the brain of the monkeys can be trained to mimic the human brain. Okay. I am going to write down the sentence and let us see if we can construct an abstract. Uh, can you repeat your sentence, the brain of the monkey? It is generally known that the brain of the monkeys can be trained to mimic the human brain. All right. So, I am going to uh, go around uh, various institutes and uh, I am going to collect a few more introductory statements and we will see which one is uh, more suited and I, I ask the next institute to actually comment on this. Okay. Thank you. Let me go to uh, Francis Institute of Technology. Um, the sentence we constructed was, given the common origins, the similarity between humans and monkeys uh, in terms of thinking process has been taken up for studies quite often. The similarities in the thinking process process of humans and monkeys yes of humans and monkeys has been taken up for study quite often. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I have one more. Yes, please. Yeah, since time immemorial, monkeys have been regarded as the immediate predecessor of humans. One of the study to confirm this is the theory of cognitive development. Okay, since time immemorial, monkeys have been regarded as the immediate predecessor of human. Thank you very much. Let me go to the next college, Kavil Guru Institute of Technology. Introduction is both animals and humans possess a non-verbal system for representing numbers approximately. Okay, thank you very much. So, I want you to comment among the three sentences given above, not including yours, uh, which one would you pick? Uh, I would pick first one, sir. It is generally known that the brain of monkeys can be trained. In this article, are they talking about training? They are talking about training as well as the similarities. No, training is a, no, no, 
training is what they did to get some result but that's not the objective it they are, it's not that we want to train monkeys to do something okay so training is not right so it is generally known that the brain of monkeys can be trained that's not the point the point is to see whether monkeys represent are able to uh, distinguish numbers as humans do okay this is the general introduction i have given no no i am talking about the first one there you said the first one is little better but my criticism of the first one is that the uh, article is not about uh, training monkeys it was a methodology adopted if you want the monkeys to do numbers you need to train them to first distinguish numbers so that was a part of the methodology that was not the objective that uh, how to train monkeys then i would say the third one sir third one since time in monkeys have been considered as an immediate predecessor yes i would also agree with that because the whole thing is about trying to find if there is any linkage or finding more evidence of the linkage and what is the extent of similarities okay although they look very similar to us many of us else is the similarity okay to find out what else is the similarity is the question all right now this sentence that we have seen is possibly can be understood by anybody anybody at the university level now the next sentence that i want you to construct it has to be at the department level and for this i request people who are working in the area of biological sciences or uh, humanities and social sciences who are uh, looking at behavioral uh, a uh, psychology or anything of that sort people who are working in the area of uh, behavioral behavioral psychology biology and so on if you can come up with the next sentence which has to be a little more specific to the department level a background that gives uh, takes you to the department level introduction take a couple of minutes so we already have some answers from university bdt college Sir, we are written both the sentences. I will start with the first sentence because it has linked to the second one. Okay. So I have written the cognitive study of linguistic and non-linguistic animals non-linguistic animals exhibit exhibit some similarity some similarity this is the first sentence sir we have made this to be more general introduction uh, appealing to across the people in the university the second sentence is monkeys and human beings this is department specific monkeys and human beings are more precise are more precise in representing are more precise in representing numerical values representing numerical values in fact we have written third fourth also but i think uh, we will restrict to this yeah thank you very much so i i would say your first thing is little not uh, it is uh, having too much of uh, technical words cognitive study so are you saying that cognitive study exhibit similarities so the, the sentence is not very clear it, it is the animals and uh, linguistic and non linguistic that exhibit similarities so yeah, similarity is regarding linguistic and non linguistic animals yeah so this sentence is probably is has to be uh, re redone but i would say this is little more um, uh, technical uh, has some technical i would still stick to uh, this sentence okay i would still stick to this sentence uh, but this and, and maybe your second sentence is okay 
that monkeys and human beings are more precise in representing numerical values. Okay, let me, I'm just erasing this and let, I'll go to another institute. This is Mahakal Institute from Ujjain. My second sentence for the general uh, abstract would be, linguist and non-linguist animal show similar response pattern that is the semantic congruity effect while identifying numerical values. Uh, this is also a conclusion from the present work. This is not a summary from the literature. So again, I am going to give you a couple of minutes to all of you. The second sentence has to be a broad introduction which is spe specific to the department. It is something which is known to the people in the department area. Okay. So, which is like a summary line summarizing what you have, what the literature has told or what is known so far. The sentences, the last two sentences that uh, two colleagues have said is more like a outcome of the present experiment. Okay. So, only if you have a summarizing sentence of the literature which is specific to a department Please raise your hands. Rajaram Bapu, Institute of Technology. The cognitive processes. Related to. Semantic congruity. Have been studied. Among, among monkeys, amongst mm. monkeys, not among sir, amongst monkeys. Now this is part of your work, you are not summarizing what has been said in the literature. Unless you state what is known in the literature, you cannot define a problem, you cannot define your research statement. What you have said here is what you have done in this work now. I'm, I will have to erase this now and I will go to the next college, Mahalingam College of Engineering. Monkeys were trained based on color cue to order visual arrays. You are telling what is done in this work. I want a sentence which summarizes the literature, what is known from before. If you read the first paragraph introduction or somewhere, you might find some clues. See, you could take a clue from the first sentence of the introduction. Humans and non-human animals discriminate numbers, you could use that. Humans and animals are faster and more accurate in comparing numerical values. So, you could rephrase these two sentences and construct a sentence. So, actually you see the problem statement comes much below. Problem statement is, what is the question there, what is the research question? Whether monkeys show a response signature of adult human. That is the problem. You have to come to the problem and you need to build that uh, stage with a background which is known so far. Okay? So, let me go to another college, KIT College of Engineering. My sentence is, the various studies are carried out by comparing their cognitive behavior by training the monkeys. Again, you are staying, saying a sentence which is about your work. I want before, see so you, your work you tell only after you have stated your problem. We have not come to problem statement yet and you think various studies have carried out by training monkeys. Again, that is what you have done. That is not literature. Alright, so we will go to the next college, Bharati Vidya Peet. Due to semantic congruity effect, compound stimuli is found in both human and their procedure monkeys to prove their innate relation. Okay, very good. This sentence is very nicely written. Uh, the reason being, it develops on the previous thing. The previous sentence says that uh, monkeys have been considered as immediate predecessors. 
Why have they been considered uh, immediate uh, predecessors? Because there is some complex uh, compound stimuli that is found in both these, which establishes the relationship. Okay, so first thing you are saying that they are related. Second, you are saying what makes it related. All right. So the first thing, first sentences might be understood by the anybody in the university, but now you are introducing a complex terminology which is compound stimuli. Now, compound stimuli is not easily understood by many people, so which is good and this sentence also relates to the previous sentence. So, excellent, thank you very much. Now, uh, let us go on to the problem. What is the research question and followed by what is the answer? Geetam University, Hyderabad. When we search for a paper, we will normally search it with a keyword or an author we know. And on the abstract, we will be given just about 120 words or 150 words to write. I want to know why would I spend or why would I lose about 20 to 30 words giving such a general statement than making a statement which contains some data in it. So, when you are writing the introduction statement, you say it should be a very general statement that anyone can understand. But for someone who is in research, they will go, they look at the keywords or the authors and pick up the paper. And when an author is given just 120 to 200 words to write an uh, abstract, why, uh, why should an author lose about 20 to 30 words giving such a general statement? Yeah, I will repeat the question for the benefit of others. The question is when usually most uh, journals require only 120 to 150 words, why should we waste, waste about 20 to 30 words in an introduction? Uh, you should not waste if it is 130 words. Uh, we already addressed this question before. Let me just reiterate the answer. Abstract is firstly for yourself. Abstract serves several purposes subtly that you do not realize until you write it down. Many ideas are not clear to us unless we put it down on paper. When we put it down on paper and read, read it and rewrite it, we tend to polish our own understanding of the matter. Now, when you are presenting, my objective was you write the abstract according to the structure that I have given then you write the paper, then you rewrite the abstract. Now, when you rewrite the abstract, at that time you decide what you want to keep, what you do not want to keep given your limitations. As I said, if a journal in which you are publishing this monkey uh, work, suppose the journal's title, the journal uh, title, the journal name is Cognitive uh, a cognitive research in monkeys. Okay. Suppose the journal's area of work itself is in cognitive research in monkeys, you should definitely not waste one word in telling about what cognitive sciences and so on. Okay. But the reason when you are writing it like this is it is for your own clarity to put the work that you have done in perspective. And you will see in the next two assignments that we will do now, how that comes into picture. Okay. So, uh, I will just take one answer for the result and then we will move on to the next thing which is elevator pitch. Vidya Pratishtan, where? Baramati. Baramati. I am eager to share with you uh, the background, a one line background. Uh, the background is, as per biological science, Weber's law says that uh, it depends on the psychological tenet. The behavior of animal and non-animal humans, uh, it is dependent on the uh, uh, psychophysical tenet. So, this was my background and now I am discussing the result. It is observed that the monkeys responded similar way to human based on the color cue and the number of elements selected. All right, very good. So, by and large, it is uh, agrees. The problem is that can monkeys distinguish? Yes, they can distinguish based on color cues. Okay. Now, we will have one last sentence for uh, the implication. 
techno india salt lake that there is a similarity in the cognitive power of trained monkeys no so thing is let me uh, tell you the problem and result we have written there it is observed that monkeys responded in a similar way okay now how do i find out the implication you need to answer the question so what so try to answer the question so what and if you have an answer to the question so what please tell me that uh, the so what is more or less answered by this uh, claim that we can make that uh, since the origin of humans and uh, monkeys as such is uh, the ape so this similarity is actually being uh, reinforced the claim that we make that we our uh, origins were the same so this the, kind of a uh, cognitive behavioral similarity kind of uh, re uh, reiterates our claim uh, of this uh, common origin correct so yeah please state that in a nice way i could restate it like uh, the whole study was uh, to bring about a certain basic uh, hypothesis that uh, we have a common origin and then a behavioral aspect is taken up and then uh, correlated in such a way like uh, this uh, kind of proportion versus color in the case of a monkey no no madam can we just have one short sentence short sentence could be this uh, linkage of uh, the evolution of co cognition is a kind of the similarity which uh, is again getting reinforced by way of this uh, similarity between this proportion and color in the case of uh, uh, monkeys okay I'm, i have written it as this reiterates the hypothesis that humans and monkeys have common origins so we have constructed a, a, at least a skeleton of an abstract okay we have not embellished it nicely but at least the skeleton is there we have got an introductory statement since time immemorial memorial uh, monkeys have been considered as an immediate predecessor of humans why so because compound stimuli is found in both humans and monkeys that establish their innate relationship however it is not clear if monkeys can distinguish sizes as humans can do so here we have studied uh, monkeys with that way and we observed that the monkeys responded in a similar way to humans based on color cues and size selection of numbers this reiterates uh, the hypothesis that humans and monkeys have common origin all right so we have completed an abstract with the skeleton